Picking up with question number eight then, approximate the area under the curve of y equals cosine of x from pi over two to three pi over two using four approximating rectangles of equal width and right endpoints. So in other words, this is asking us to find R4. However, I do need a chart of values. Okay, so I know my x's are going to start with pi over two, but then I have to know how far apart are they spread? What should my next x value be in my um, table right here? So in other words, how do I find what my change of x's are? Remember, this is that same formula, b minus a over n. So in this case, it's three pi over two minus pi over two over n, which is the same thing as two pi over two or pi over n. Oh, n we do know is four. And so every pi over four units. So if I add pi over four to pi over two, well, quite honestly, I like to kind of think of my unit circle here. Here's, well, that's a really bad circle. Here's pi over two. If I add pi over four to it, where am I at? And I happen to be at three pi over four. Now, when I add pi over four to that, where am I at? I'm at pi. Add pi over four to that. I am at five pi over four and add pi over four to that, and I'm down here at three pi over two, which actually is exactly the end point that I'm supposed to stop at. From here, I'm gonna put each of these into my function up here. Cosine of pi over two is zero. Cosine of three pi over four is negative rad two over two. Cosine of pi is negative one. Cosine of five pi over four right over here is negative rad two over two, and cosine of three pi over two is zero. All right, so using right endpoints means I'm gonna use these four over here to the right. I'm not actually using this first one. And so I take whatever my width is from my x's, which again was right up here, pi over four, and then times, and now I'm going to take each of these y values and add those together. Negative rad two over two plus negative one plus negative rad two over two plus zero. All right, so let's see, doing a little bit of math here. Negative rad two over two plus negative rad two over two is negative two rad two over two, which reduces down to negative rad two, and then minus one. And of course you could leave your answer that way right there. You could distribute this if you really thought it did anything. I mean, you really could write it like this as well, something like that. You know, any of those are perfect. Does not matter to me which way you write it, but please don't give me a decimal for this right here. Okay. All right, so that is question number eight. Next, we move on to question Number nine, it says, find the indefinite integral seven plus five x cubed plus seven x to the fifth dx. And this one should be pretty easy for you at this point, adding one to the exponent, dividing by the new exponent. And as you go across here, I think you can see my writing seven x minus five x to the fourth over four plus seven x to the six over six, and then just don't forget that plus c right there, okay? And that is your answer. There's no other work required for that problem. And then number 10, this ends the review. This number 10 here ends the review for day one of your test, which will be Monday, and then day two will pick up with part two here. It says, find the area of the region under the curve f of x equals x squared minus 3x plus 7 on the interval from negative 1 to 4. So first of all, I should probably take a look at what the graph of this looks like. Is part of it above the x-axis and part below, or is it completely above? Because this is asking for area. So if it is below the x-axis, I'm going to have to change that part to positive. So I have here my calculator... Um, I graphed that equation from negative one to four, and you can see that it's completely above the x-axis. That means there's nothing fancy I have to do with this at all. All right, so from that, 
I can take and set up an integral of the function x squared minus 3x plus 7 dx. And then this interval gives me my integral values from negative 1 to 4. And then from there, let's see, we evaluate the integral by adding 1 to the exponent dividing by the new exponent minus 3x squared over 2 plus 7x evaluated from negative 1 to 4. All right, from here, let's see, top minus bottom. We're not quite lucky enough this time to have a zero for this bottom number. Plugging the top number in, 4 cubed is 64 thirds. 4 squared here is 16. 16 divided by 2, though, well, 16 divided by 2 is 8 times 3, which is minus 24. And then 7 times 4 is 28. Now we plug the negative 1 in. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1 third. Negative 1 squared is 1 times negative 3 halves is negative 3 halves. And then 7 times negative 1 is minus 7. All right, so this gives me 64 thirds. I'm going to add these together plus 4. And now distribute the negative. Plus 1 third plus 3 halves plus 7. So 64 thirds plus 1 third is 65 thirds. 4 plus 7 is 11, and then plus 3 halves. And at this point here, I would probably get a common denominator. Common denominator here is 6. Multiply the first one by 2, I get 130. Multiply the middle one by 6, I get 66. And multiply this guy over here by 3, I get 9. And then when I add those together, I get 196 plus 9 is 205. Oops, that's kind of off the page there. Over 6. So that would be an exact answer right there. Or, of course, 34 and 1 6. But I think most of you are probably just going to give me the 205 6 from what I've seen so far from you. All right, perfect. That finishes up our day one of our test review.